We'd like to welcome you to the Class 5A Region Preview Show, Lee T. This is the fifth in a series of six Region Preview Shows we are presenting to you guys. I am Mike Motor. He is Lee T. And, uh, Lee, we've uh, started each of these shows. We kind of recap what happened at the uh, mm-hmm. end of last season, uh, postseason, kind of give an uh, audience a little familiarity and, and – uh, refresher on what happened if they're like me i can't even remember who won the world series last year so <laughs> uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of do this kind of you know bring them up to speed on what happened last year uh, a lot of these people watching their old parts like you and i lee they, <laughs> memory's kind of wailing a little bit so this is what happened last year uh lee well i tell you what mike 5a to us by far i think is the most balanced but yep. it is also the most difficult class to pick no doubt. Top to bottom, it's it's balanced. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, we looked at the east side of the bracket last year in a 5A. Th- this season is much like last year. There's no clear favorites. I think uh, not Central uh, coming off a state title. But, uh, you know, teams like Powell, uh, South Doyle, West, mm-hmm. Oak Ridge were expected to be contenders. Central did get hot, you know, at the right time last year with wins over uh, Crockett, Gibbs, and South Doyle. And then uh, West, uh, they they found themselves uh, making their fourth title appearance in the uh, three years, uh, or their third and four years. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, fourth title game appearance and third and four years. Third and four years. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, Help man. Me out there. <laughs> uh, the west side of the bracket, it's the same thing. No clear favorite. Right. Uh, region five and six was expected to be the toughest competition, but Region five prevailed. Uh, third seed Summit. Our buddy down there, Brian Coleman, got hot. Yes, he did. At the right time. Has a couple of real key players there. Uh, ran through that quad with wins over Gallatin, Page, and Shelbyville. Uh, then Henry County appeared out of quad four, won eight straight. Uh, defeated Ridgeway, Clarksville. And then lost a rematch with the region rival, Dyer County. And then Summit, of course, beat Dyer County there in the semis, 27-20, and got to the title game. Yeah, Lee, and that, that title game, to me, I'm sure you felt the same way, the, the biggest element, I thought, was just experience. You know, Summit entered that game, with, you know, with a, a couple of young sophomores leading that squad, and uh, then you had that veteran central squad on the other side of the line of scrimmage mm-hmm. uh, had made, uh, like we mentioned, the third appearance and, and looked much more relaxed, even yes. in the pregame, in the coin flip. Yeah. You know, I was filming them in the coin flip, and, 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 and those kids, you know, they were going to practice. Yeah, yeah well, I, I think even the coaches, you can yeah. kind of see it. Yeah. Coaches were a little bit more relaxed. It was uh, something that not new to them. So, yeah. Yeah. But hats off to uh, Summit, man, the short history. They yeah. had a program very long, and there they sit. Yeah, they were. I mean, they actually led in total yardage and time of possession. But I think the key to the game, Lee, was a lot of failed scoring mm-hmm. opportunities in the red zone. Uh, they uh, led uh, – uh, or, or excuse me, the Bobcats wound up winning the thing thirty to seven. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, Summit got up some valuable experience. Yes, I think they that's did. gonna that's gonna help them uh, heading into this season. Of course, uh, Central's quarterback Dakota Farver, he was named the championship MVP. But uh, you know, as we mentioned, the, the experience Summit and uh, Coach Coleman gained by getting to that title game, uh, we expect that to pay play uh, big dividends for them this year. I do too. Well, Lee, if you're ready to roll, we'll head on into this Class 5A. And, again, like we said, uh, Lee, this uh, 5A was uh, tough to pick again this year. We didn't really, you know, we didn't really have any clear-cut team that we could look at and say, hey, this team will win the region this year. Uh, I think there was uh, 10 new coaches in Class 5A, Lee. There's 51 teams total, 10 new coaches. So uh, that's kind of in between what we've seen. We've seen a max of 13 in 3A, and then we had six, I think, in Class uh, 1A. But when you compare it to last year, not a lot of coaching turnover, you know, uh, for the whole state. Yeah. COVID maybe, I think maybe had something to do with that possibly. Possibly. Uh, but at the uh, 5A level in Region 1 Lee, there was only one new coach. Uh, Tennessee High, Mike Mays had a really, a really huge – uh, successful season last year, nine and two, uh, wound up uh, finishing uh, six and zero in region play. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about them for a minute. Uh, well, he's got an exciting player up there in Jaden Keller. Uh, you know, number eighteen recruit, uh, according to two four seven anyway. Uh, Isaiah Smith, Bryce Snyder, Connor Bailey back. Uh, Jacob Kraft is back. The interesting thing about Tennessee High is they got a couple of games against some Virginia teams, and we all know that 
as of right now, Virginia is not uh, participating in sports. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. But I don't think they repeat as region champs. I don't. You don't like them to win the region this year? No, sir. I don't think they repeat as a region champs. I agree with you, Lee. Although they do have some big name players, uh, other teams have got seem to have more returning starters. And I can't verify that because we don't have uh, Donovan Stewart's uh, annual capsules. Uh, right. He hasn't released this class yet as we are recording this show right now. Uh, but I think Daniel Boone, the Trailblazers, uh, who began the season one and four, Lee, they won six of the final seven games. Uh, they did lose to Tennessee 35 to nothing mm -hmm. on September the 6th, but that was before they hit that hot streak. That's correct. And uh, I like what uh, Jeremy uh, Jenkins' squad has got coming back. They were 7-5, five, 5-1. Five and one. They did get knocked out by South Dole 28-12 uh, to 12 there in the second round. What's your thoughts on Boone? I think Boone's going to be right there. I think they're going to be in the hunt for this uh, region title. Um, Brennan Blair, Devin White – uh, you know, Matthew Masters is back, Jacob Jenkins, a senior kicker, and then Preston Miller and Will Hamlin. Uh, I like the fact that they did get on that win streak late. You know, they took one on the chin against a real good South Dole team, right. you know, in the first round. But uh, I think Coach Jenkins and the Trailblazers are going to be right there in the hunt, man. I do too, Lee. And then their arch rival, Crockett, uh, they had a pretty good year also, 7-4, 3-3. They won their first seven games, Lee, and then lost the remaining four games. So uh, it's kind of a tale of two halves for, mm -hmm. for the Pioneers. And I don't know, hopefully, uh, Hayden Channing, we like him, the young guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he uh, he's done a really good job there at Crockett, 19-5 uh, overall. I don't know. That's got to be a little alarming, I guess, if you're a Pioneers fan, the fact that they did kind of self-destruct there at the end of the season. Wouldn't you agree with that? I do, but I tell you what, they got uh, a difference maker in Prince Colley. Right. You know, 6'2", 192, running back. Pretty good-sized young man. Yep. Uh, number eight recruit, I think, in the state for the class of 2021. Right. Uh, also has, uh, you know, Isaiah Lang back, Rucker, uh, Brendan Reed's back, Parrish Combs, Trey Marler, uh, Tony Davis. I mean, he's got a lot of returners. And despite the fact they did lose those final four games, they, they did play eventual champion Knox Central pretty close sure. in the first round. Yes. 24-14. Uh, sure did. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't really know what to expect out of this Crockett team, but I think they got a really good chance to possibly even take this region this year uh, they definitely are going to be right there in the hunt yeah. i think so i agree lee cherokee uh cody ball's team and, and uh, we mentioned in our 4a school he was kind of rumored when that uh greenville job came open uh, a few weeks back he was he was one of the hot names we were hearing as a, a possible returning to Greenville. of course he was the offensive coordinator there under kane ballard so he uh, he's got a good pretty good coaching pedigree Six and five, three and three last year there for the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what's your thoughts on the Cherokee heading into this year? Well, I think Coach Ball this year has got to get a win, a signature win. I right. think. I think if he can get his signature win, I think they'll get rolling. Uh, you know, three of the losses uh, that he accrued last year were the three teams that uh, were ahead of him. Right. Uh, I think he's got to get over the hunt with one of them. If he can get a win over one of them, I like him to get into the playoffs and maybe get a first round win. They they kind of they, they kind of mirrored what happened to Crockett. You know, they mm -hmm. won their first five they games did. and they lost their their last four games. Uh, you know, like you said, three of them were the region rivals, but uh, they need to uh, finish the season out, man. I mean, it's it's great getting off to a hot mm -hmm. start, but you got to maintain focus all the way through. That's correct. And I think that's going to be key for them this year. Uh, but I like them, man. I think they're I think they're a play, likely a playoff team again this year. I think they're going to be uh, competing with Morristown East. The Hurricanes, uh, Lee, they lost their uh, – they kind of the flip side of this. They mm -hmm. lost their first six games but uh, uh, got on a four-game win streak to end the season, including uh, three re region wins over uh, Crockett, Volunteer, and Cock County. Mm -hmm. So, they, you know, they, they win three region games. Uh, to close out the uh, year, so uh, Caleb uh, Slover, he did he did an excellent job there in his first year, turning things around. He's got momentum shifted, uh, possible playoff team here this year. 
Uh, very possible. Like I said, I, if Coach Ball gets a signature win, maybe maybe Morristown East might struggle to get in. But I think if it's like you said, if it plays out kind of like it did last year, Morristown East got a good shot of getting in. The, getting in, and they got Colin Henson back, uh, senior quarterback. Uh, Trevor Malone is is that wide receiver. He's mm -hmm. a junior, and then Deshaun Harris is is leading the the way up there on that offensive line. Uh, so the Hurricanes are going to push for a playoff spot. I think so. I do. I do think so, Lee. I think they uh, very. You know, I would. Well, I don't want to say that. I put them in a dead heat with Cherokee right now. Yeah. I think uh, for that four spot, they're definitely going to be in the in the running. Uh, the next team down, Lee was Volunteer. They're uh, that's the one new coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse McMillan takes over. He was promoted from the defensive coordinator spot. Uh, he also was a D.C. at Dobbins Bennett for a while. Takes over for Justin Presley. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Falcons, man? Any any possibility they move in to a playoff spot this year? Uh, as of right now, I don't see it. You don't see it? I don't see it right now. But now, you know, when you're a defensive coordinator at Dobbins Bennett, that's a pretty pretty good size, pretty big program. Right. A quality program, too. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, Coach McMillan's been around winning. Mm -hmm. and hopefully he'll bring that with him up to volunteer. Dane Dykes at linebacker, uh, Cam Johnson at running back, and then Allen, another linebacker, all seniors. Yes. So you like the fact that uh, key players coming back for this Falcon squad are seniors. Uh, Lee Cock County, 1-9, 0-6. Scotty Dykes, uh, first season there at Cock County. The Fighting Cox, not a lot of success last year. I just can't see any room. Don't Man, see any room. I don't see any room for them. Even, you know, Cole Gonzalez, Tavion France, uh, Saucman's back, Jacob King, Landon Lane. Um, whew, Coach Dykes just got his hands full. Got his hands full. I agree, Lee. I don't think they do much either. Uh, moving on to Region 2, Lee, you got South Dole, our buddy Clark Duncan. We had him on the show with us last year. His Cherokees, 9-4, 5-1 uh, in region play. Uh, the big question mark here, I think, mm -hmm. is that how can you overcome the uh, amount of offense you're going to lose with Elijah Young and, of course, uh, quarterback Mason Rang uh, graduating. Uh, who, who's going to fill the void for those two? Yeah, that that's a huge question. How do you fill that void? I don't know that you can. Elijah Young might have been one of the most talented backs I've ever seen, me, me, you know, in yeah, a long time. Yeah, me too. Um, well, I think, did he go to Missouri? I think that's correct. I think he went I to Missouri. Believe, I believe, I believe that's right. right. Uh, Noah Myers, you know, he's a running back that's coming back that's a senior. Then you got Terrell Brown, uh, senior wide receiver. Uh, David Hull, senior tackle. Uh, <clears throat> and then Lex Scott, who's a junior cornerback coming back. I, I just don't know if South Doyle will repeat his champs. I, I don't think so. It'd be tough, Lee. It'd be hard to overcome the amount of talent they lost. The only region lost last year was a 7-3 loss to Seymour, oddly yeah, enough. God. But I, did, uh, I still, think, wasn't a, uh, didn't a Young get hurt young or got something? Hurt. Yeah, I believe he I did get hurt right. in that game. I'm pretty sure that's right. I Lee. think it's right. Uh, they lost to uh, Anderson County and Powell in non-region games. Right. But, uh, I agree with you, Lee. I think it's going to be a tough task to try to repeat again this year. And then Knox Central finishes second in that uh, region. They started out 8-0, Lee. Uh, lost to Gibbs and lost to South Doyle in back-to-back -back weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they come back and run the table all the way to a uh, second consecutive state title over Summit. Uh, Nick Craney steps in a really good situation there as uh, Coach Rosser uh, exits as head coach. Not many times you get to uh, get your first head coaching job as a 27-, 28-year-old uh, taking over a defending state champ, is it? <laughs> uh, no, but i tell you what, man. Uh, they got a lot of faith in Coach Craney. Uh, I know Coach Rosser I thought a lot of him, but we thought a lot of Coach Rosser. Yes, we did. You know, Coach Rosser was uh, – he, he was a little bit older than he looked. Yeah. You know, he looked real young, yeah. but he was a little bit older than he looked. But I tell you what, man, he – He was a class act. Class actor. act, and his teams were very well coached. I hate yep. to see him leave. He's not even in the state of Tennessee anymore. I think he moved up into the northeast. Yeah, I think his wife took a job. Uh, there at one of the Ivy League, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Uh, I hated to see Coach Rosser go, but c congrats to Coach Craney for getting the nod, and I don't see any let up in Knox Central at, at all. 
I don't. Caleb Fortner, the linebacker, all state. He returns Lee. Uh, Dakota Mitchell yep. at running back. Joshua Bland at tackle. Junior six four two eighty. Yes, sir. Uh, Liam Fortner at wide receiver. And then they've got Jaden Horton at uh, DB. He was also listed as all state. Yep. And, uh, you know, and then they got all state kicker as well. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I could easily see them winning the region. I think you'd have to put them as a favorite. Yeah, you, I do. I don't think there's going to be any let up. I don't. Yeah. Uh, and and the thing about it is with Knox Central, you know, Coach Craney's the DC. With Knox Central's defense, defensively was stout. Yeah, they were. So yes, I think they they're going to continue that. Held uh, so much seven points yeah. there in the title game. That's right. Uh, Knox Halsley, uh, Scott Cummings squad, uh, former Knox West head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, he and Cleveland head coach. Uh, he's at Halls. He uh, seven four in his first year there. Four and two in region play. They were knocked out by Boone. In the first round, he's got Tyler Humphrey back at quarterback, so you got to like that if you're a Red Devil fan. Uh, Hayden Woods at tight end, uh, Avery Robertson at defensive end, so got some kids back. For, he does. For Halls. Does he got to play a little bit tighter in the big ball games? Yeah. Um, you know, last year he lost Central, obviously forty-five to three, and then Powell forty-nine to nothing. You know, you got to you got to show up in those games. Right. You know. Uh, but I do think Coach Cummins will get into the playoffs. I think it'll be a, you know, he may be a three or a four seed maybe. Yeah, I, I like that as well. Yeah. And the reason why, I think Gibbs, uh, the fourth place team last year, Lee, I think they probably leap over them and finish as high as maybe two this year. I like what uh, Brad Turner la did last year. He played uh, really good down the stretch. He had big wins over Central. Yes, he, he did. A uh, team that won the state title. He beat Tennessee, the team that was – uh, uh, finished first in there. First in Region 1. So he had some uh, great uh, wins there. Uh, middle of a, he was, I think uh, Tennessee was in the middle of a five-game win streak. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of talent returning. I kind of have Gibbs as a sleeper in the East. I think they may potentially make some playoff noise this year. Make based, a little, based make on some waves. Uh, you know, what they've got coming back. Yeah, Keegan Katz, uh Clotavius Barnes, Colton Qualls back, you know, senior quarterback. Um, Bryson Schoen, man, they just got a bunch back, dude. Yeah, yep. I mean, a bunch. Tyrese McKinney. You, you like might them? be right, buddy. Like that them? might be a sleeper team. I think it is, man. I like them in, in, in finishing strong. I always look at that, Lee. I look at how they ended the season, uh, especially a team that's got a lot returning. Yeah. Because you know they had momentum in mm -hmm. that year. I hope this COVID stuff didn't didn't knock them off that momentum because, uh, you know, I think that may affect teams like this that that potentially were going to be strong coming back more so than it would be a team that's young. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to you want to maintain that momentum, uh, and I don't know what kind of effect. Well, you don't know what kind of effect this stuff's going to have on any of these kids. Uh, as of now, Lee, of course, uh, I think Metro. Metro has is, is postponed their games, and we talked about that in the 4A school. They've postponed their games until after Labor Day. Uh, Henry, Henry County. County. Henry County is delaying, so we don't know what kind of effect. And you talked about this in our last show, Lee. It's just I think mentally it's going to be tough on these kids if they don't get to play football this year. Well, I agree. Uh, Seymour, Lee, they uh, did defeat the region champ South Dole 7-3, uh, Scott. Brenton in his uh, first season there, five and five, two and four, uh, did miss the playoffs. Uh, Mickey Nabina, uh, Nevins, I'm sorry. Yep, Nevins. That's that, that's that poor eyesight again. <laughs> uh, J.D. Kendall, uh, Brandon Harris, some of the kids they've got coming back. Uh, Sevier County, the Smoky Bears, Lee, uh, three and seven, one and five. That, that program's really – Really dropped off a lot from from a team that made it to the state title game. What was it, four or five years ago? Yeah, it didn't seem that long ago. Well, no, nah, uh, Coach uh, Ligenfelter's been there six years. I think it was a year before he got there. Yeah. So I guess it was seven years ago. Time's flying on this program. Mm -hmm. uh, Braden Hurst is a wide receiver. Tyler Wilson, uh, Braden uh, uh, Corrin, is that how you say that? Corrin, uh, quarterback. Uh, he's listed I don't know if he's a returning starter or not, Lee. I'm not sure. We don't right. have that returning starter list. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, I think I mentioned that, uh, Donovan Stewart's capsules on on Class 5A. But uh, Knox uh, Carter, 
Hornets. Uh, Justin Meadows. Presley is a new head coach mm -hmm. here. Of course, he left uh, volunteer to take this job here at Carter Lee. Uh, I think that was probably an improved situation for him. Would you, wouldn't you agree going over to Knoxville school? Mm, he would definitely be. Probably, I think he got exposed a, pay raise a little bit. Anyway, didn't he? Well, he probably got exposed, exposure to a little bit more talent. Yeah. Uh, as you know, <clears throat> but man, look, he's got Tim Flack, Melton, Whittington, Anthony Stalker. Uh, Chandler Wilson, who's a sophomore last year, or coming in, yeah. had 744 yards last year, nine TDs and five interceptions. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can see some room for improvement. I don't know that they're going to get into the playoffs. I don't either. Uh, I think they leap, probably leap Sevier County, but I don't know if they go much further than that. They did beat uh, Seymour. They did. 7-7. Seven seven, yeah. And uh, they only lost against Halls by a single point. So. That's right. So uh, I think you know, they can play, they, you know. Yeah, they can compete. All right, Lee, that's going to wrap up regions one and two. Uh, we'll put a graphic up on show you how we got those two regions projected, and uh, then we'll come back uh, right after that. All right, Lee, that was Regions 1 and 2. We're going to jump right into Region 3. Region 3, really tough region last year. Uh, Powell, Matt Lowe's squad wind up running the table. 6-0 and in region play, 12-1 uh, and overall. They were 12-0 and running it when they met West there in the third round, Lee. So, really good season for the Panthers. Uh, had four wins by six points or less. So, uh, you know, I, we kind of talked about uh, who was in another team? Was it Springfield? It won a lot of close games. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 like I mentioned, that's a mark of a good coach to be able to win those close games. Mm -hmm. This region is pretty solid, buddy. I think they won uh, three of the four first-round playoff games this region did. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, so, man. speaking of Powell, Jordan Potts, kid come uh, sophomore, did very well in the Gunslinger Challenge, uh, which is up in East Tennessee. Right. Um, and it's a sophomore. It's a That's sophomore. Yeah, he did he did a good job, man. And then you got uh, another sophomore, with Darius Redmond. Got multiple offers. And, you know, Faust, another sophomore offer from Tulane. Uh, Fernando Francis is a running back. Cameron Gans, a junior, six three two ninety. So Coach Lowell has got a full stable. What a what a shocker, right? He has a full stable at Powell, and, man, he, you know. He picked right back up from where he left off in 2011. He did. He? he did, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if, whew, buddy, this this region is rough. Yep. This region is rough. Two or the three? Two. Uh, two. Yeah. I'm I'd going say, two. I'd say two. Uh, uh. I don't know though, man. You got some other good teams, and, and another good team in this region is West. You know, West made it all the way to semifinals. Uh, got shut out by Central ten to nothing. They were twelve and two, five and one. Lee, uh, West got really hot uh, last season. End the season with uh, seven straight wins prior to that one point loss to Powell, mm -hmm. uh, which gave Powell the region title, and then they went on another run, uh, which ended with that loss to Central. So. Uh, Lamar Brown's Rebels, man, I think I think they're going to be the team to beat in this Region 3 this year, to be honest with you. What's your thoughts? Mm. <laughs> I, I like Coach Brown, and I like the Rebels. It's going to come down to maybe at one point again. Yeah. I really think that. Yeah. Um, you know, they got Isaiah Matrice. Uh, Kane Lewis, John Harrison. Uh, you know what's interesting about these two teams? If you look across the board, man, West is all sophomores and juniors with a couple of seniors mixed in, and Powell's all sophomores and juniors with yep. a couple of seniors mixed in. So this is going to be a battle again for a while. Uh, I would think right now, Mike, odds on, I would give the nod to West just because of the playoff run they made last year yep. uh, to one spot. But, whew, 
buddy. It's just, that's going to be a really exciting region to watch. It is, and, and uh, I mean, that's not the only two no, good teams. No, Lord, no. Region. We ain't even covered the other yeah, ones. you got uh, Rob Black's uh, Fulton team. They came on there toward the end. They began the season 0-6. So how often is that going to happen, Lee T? No, about Rob that, Black. That a Rob Black team to start out 0-6. Uh, they did beat Oak Ridge by one point in that uh, regular season finale to uh, – to get that third seed there, uh, wind up getting knocked out by Ray County, uh, 47-14 in the first round. But uh, MacArthur McCovery is the uh, running back, senior running back back, Jeffrey Riddle, a quarterback, Emmanuel Wallace, uh, Bill Anderson, uh, Tommy Sweat. I believe he started at quarterback and made a quarterback change whenever they started winning. I, I think, I'm not 100% I think sure. I think it went to that. Riddle late. Well, I, that's what I'm thinking. I think so. But I, I, I wouldn't swear to that. My memory ain't that good. <laughs> Uh, Cameron Stokes uh, at center, uh, Marcellus Jackson, uh, free safety, only a sophomore. They really like him, pretty high on him. Uh, but, you know, I like the Falcons. I like any team coached by Rob Black. I'm not going to count them out, that's mm -mm. for sure. Man, his out-of-region schedule is atrocious. Yeah, it's his uh, – and that, that really got him in trouble last year. Yeah. Uh, Oak Ridge Lee, Joe Gaddis' Wildcat team is, is a team I've got as a sleeper over on the east side of the state. Uh, I think they could potentially make a deep run this year. Mm. What do you think about that? If they wasn't in this region. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you look at it. They got uh, Mitchell Givens back at quarterback, 1,811 yards, uh, 24 TDs, 11 INTs. Anytime you got a senior with a lot of experience coming back at quarterback, you got to like your chances, especially when he's got uh, yeah. Trey, Trey Roll right there. Uh, and then Preston Turner to catch the ball, really good senior receiver. Uh, and then you got Kendall Jackson That's in right. running back, 914 yards, 11 TDs. You got a lot of offensive power. Just uh, it's really going to, uh, I think, uh, whether the defense comes to play. I think it's going to be the key thing uh, for Oak Ridge. The, the offense is definitely there. They're going to have to play good on the defense side of the ball. They will know a little more about them too when they go to Mount Juliet. Yeah, that was a big here. win for them last year, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we'll know more about that. Uh, well, yeah. They were I, actually host Mount Juliet, right? I think they went to Mount Juliet last year. Uh, are they at Mount Juliet this year? No. The, the notes okay, I, I got you, I got you. Uh, yeah, it so they go to, or, or Mount Juliet goes up there, but yeah, still, we'll know more about them. Right, right. Right that's, there. Uh, I think that's uh, later on in the season, if I remember right. So, uh it, it's uh, that's definitely a good out of region game for them. Now. Yeah. Uh, mm, what are you thinking? Harden Valley, DB, and West last year was three of their losses. Two or two to two or three. Yeah, yeah. I think they battle with Powell. I mean, I got I got West as a slight edge over the other four teams, and I think these two teams battle it out for second. But I think these three or four teams, you know, you could probably pull them all in a hat and draw them out. And, and whatever you come out with, you can probably bet some money on them and be all right. Yeah, I think you agree with that. Yeah, I kind of, I, like I said, I like, I think Powell and West are a shade better. Yeah. But. Well, I, I just like the offensive power yes. that Joe Gaddis has got coming back. I, yeah. That's why I really like them. Uh, and the guy, I mean, he's won 321 games. He, he knows what the heck he's doing, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Clinton, uh, under new management, Lee, uh, Daryl Keith, uh, he came, he came in from Todd County, Central Kentucky. Uh, he's taking over for Randy McCamey. Yep. Uh, the Dragons 2-8, two 2-4 and eight, two and four last year. Trevor Linderman, the offensive lineman, is back. Uh, they've got uh, Jacob Brook at uh, quarterback. Brock, I'm sorry. Uh, Connor Moody. Gavin Bellinger. Uh, yep. got, got some kids back. Uh, Thackerson. Thackerson, at quarterback, he had 844 yards last year. Had a lot of turnovers, though. That's that's a that's a concern. Yeah, you know, one thing about Clinton, the Dragons, they're going to have to coach Keith now coming in. He's going to have to put some points up, man. They did not have any offense last year. Yeah, they were terrible. Then uh, Campbell County kind of dropped off a little bit last year. Uh, Lee Justin Price yeah. did a good job there, but they were four and eight. Or excuse me, four and six, one and five. Hunter White is back at quarterback, though, 1,735 passing yards. So, you got, you got to like the fact that – and he was young. He was a sophomore mm -hmm. last year. He's That's back right. as a junior with some experience. You got to like that situation uh, while he's running that spread, and, and you got a guy that can sling the ball back there. Yeah, and then you got C.J. Allen back as a tailback. Uh, 
looks like they got a couple of senior linemen in Caden Brock and Ben Conrad. So you like that in front of a younger quarterback. Yep. Uh, well, they just, won three of the first four games, and yeah, then they ended they losing did. their final four games. So, uh, you know, that may be a product of a young quarterback. You know, you need him to stay. If something bad happens, you you got to you gotta stay in his ear, you know. And, yeah. And, uh, he might hit the wall, too. Sometimes yeah, the younger quarterbacks hit the wall Yeah. By, uh, about midseason. But uh, I, I just can't see any room. Uh, they they may move up to that uh, fifth spot, but I don't yeah. think there's any room for them in the playoffs. In I don't think so yet. Carnes, uh, Brad Taylor, the Beavers, two and eight, one and five, uh, had a win over Fulton by a score of twenty-eight to twenty. I guess that was a highlight of that two and eight year. Yeah. Uh, Deshaun Bishop is listed as athlete, uh, thousand twenty-four rushing yards, sixteen TDs. So he'll definitely be the focal point of that offense again this year. Yep. All right, Mr. Teat, uh, let's move on quickly to Region 4. Uh, Saudi Daisy uh, been able to edge out Ray County the last two years in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, they were able to uh, get them again last year, Lee. They've got some uh, good talent coming back, uh, le led by Isaac Barnes, uh, 2,264 yards, 27 TDs, but he did have 15 interceptions. That's another thing we were just talking about. Though. you got to do a better job of uh, taking care of the ball. At the QB spot, right, and I, if I'm not mistaken, is that Coach Barnes' son? That would be my guess. I think I so. I think that's his son. Yeah. If I, I could be wrong, but I believe that's that right. Would make sense. Uh, uh, be honest with you, I didn't even put those two together until you said that. Yeah, so. I, I think so. But uh, Keyshawn Eubanks, you know, is his target. He's yeah. an all-stater. Yeah. Uh, I I like Saudi Daisy to get a home field playoff game. I just don't know if they're going to be able to finish first in the region. Yeah, I don't either. I like uh, Coach Pemberton's Ray County Golden Eagles. I think they probably would have won this game last year, Lee, but uh, they got shut out 35 to nothing by Red Bank. And I think they might have had a little bit of a hangover and they went and played Saudi Daisy the following week. Mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, the better team as evidenced by the fact they were the only team to get out of the first round in this region four. But Cade Wicks – uh, Justin Woody, and then they've got Dalton Hampton back at running back, 1,207 yards, mm -hmm. 13 TDs. Uh, Gavin Roddy uh, at quarterback return, Ryan Young. So uh, Coach Pemberton, uh, you know, no stranger to uh, uh, success in, in the coaching ranks. He's got a state title there. So uh, I like uh, I like Coach Pemberton's Ray County squad to win this region. I do too. I'm a little, you know, like I said, a little concerned with heavy senior graduation, but uh, yeah, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, I think uh, so. This is a team I was really impressed with last year, Lee uh, Walker Valley. Drew Atkins in his first year, four and seven. You may not, you know, may say to yourself, well, four and seven and all that spectacular, but they've come a long way under. Oh the, yes, they have. Uh, they had a, had a winless season uh, in 2018. He came in, got four wins. Mm -hmm. uh, they did lose their first four games, so, uh, you know, they uh, only fell by seven to Saudi Daisy. Correct. In the uh, final regular season game, which tells me they're playing really good at the end of the year. Yep, I think so. They, like I said, uh, Tucker Pope is coming back this year. You know, had 1,900 and something yards last year, 19 TDs. Got to clean up the interceptions a little bit. Yep. A little bit more, get, get a little bit more stingy with the ball there, Tucker. Yep. Uh, but – uh, you know, he's got Calum Lowe, uh, Dylan Jenkins, uh, Reed Gibson. I mean, they got – Walker Valley's got athletes, man. Got a lot of kids back. They got a lot of kids Daniel back. Daniel Denton, he's a listed yeah. as an athlete senior. Vines. I mean, they got a bunch. Then you got uh, Lenore City, uh, Lee Teat, and then, again, this is another example, a four-team region. You got a, a one-and-nine team in the uh, postseason. I don't like it, but, uh, mm. you know, it is what it is. Uh, Jeff Cortez, 19 and 47 in his six years at Lenore. They do have uh, Zane Ward back at quarterback. He's a junior. Uh, well, he, uh, Mason Stanley is also listed quarterback late, so I'm not even going to speak out of turn here. I'm not sure which one of those kids starts. Uh, Tucker Yancey, uh, Devin Davis, uh, Trey, uh, is that Will Hoyt or White? I can't. How do you pronounce that, Lee? Why height? Why height? Yeah. W i h i t. Maybe I misspelled that. Maybe it's supposed to be Will Hyde. 
How about a Mr. White? Bit? Trey White. How about that? Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm sorry about that. Well, Trey. the big thing with Coach Cortez, he got to start scoring, man. Yeah. He average 10 points a game. Yeah, you're not going to win you know? many games mm -hmm. uh, averaging 10 points a game. No, you got to get some points up they, there. They uh, beat a winless Heritage team the first game of the season, and then, uh, like you say, they only average 10 points a game for yep. the remaining 10 games. That's not good. No. All right, Mr. Teat, Region 3 and 4 in the books. Uh, we'll put that stat up on the screen now, kind of give you our projections for those two regions. Uh, we'll uh, head back in and, and discuss Region 5 right after this. All right, Lee, that was Regions 3 and 4. We're going to jump right into Region 5, man. And Region 5 was really, really tough last year. Mm. Very competitive. Our eventual state representative on the west side of the bracket came out of this region. Uh, but this region was uh, dominated by Page. Lee, during the uh, regular season, they were 5-0, and 10-2 oh, mm -hmm. uh, overall. Uh, they uh, lost some uh, key players on offense. Other than that, uh, you know they uh, are going to be. I think they're going to be pretty solid again this year. They've got a lot of kids back. A lot of kids that got a lot of playing time uh, last year. They did have a loss to Lipscomb Academy, and uh, they were really only tested one time in region play last year. A uh, close game uh, against Shelbyville. They uh, won 34 to 29. Mm -hmm. It was a questionable call there at the end of the it play. Was. Uh, I think a, I think that a kid was ruled. Uh, Past the line of scrimmage on a pass play or something. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Uh, which Shelbyville scored the winning touchdown, but it was uh, it was uh, knocked off the board. And then uh, Page did win that region title, uh, but they lost to Summit Lee in the rematch, 28-3 uh, to in the second round, if you remember. That's right. Uh, the biggest thing for Coach Rathbone this year is he's got to replace uh, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the region. From last year's team, right. Uh, but he does have Harrison Heyman, Owen Sachs, Trip Hancock, Colin Hurd, uh, Nolan Henry, Rutland, uh, Eaton Snyder, Coles, uh, another Rutland. You know, I mean, he's got plenty of talent coming back. And the thing about Pages, they're very well coached. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes. I think they're going to be fine. I just don't think they're going to repeat. Yeah. I don't think they'll repeat as region champs this year. And they did lose big Bubba in the backfield too. I Bo Johnson. That. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, he's got a, he's got a, he's got to fit some new faces in. That's he's right. got, like you said, they, they, he's got a lot of kids with a lot of experience coming back, but I don't think he, I think he lost a lot of starters also. Yeah. Key starters. Yeah. I don't think he repeats. So, uh, Shelbyville, the Golden Eagles. Uh, this one's interesting yeah, to me. Yeah, Justin Palmer's out down there. Uh, our buddy Josh Puckett, uh, the defending uh, 1A state champ uh, head coach from yep. Lake County, takes mm -hmm. over that program. Uh, he's got some key pieces coming back on this uh, Shelbyville Golden Eagle team that went 11-2 and two last year. Yes, he does. I think uh, Golden Eagle fans are – are going to be surprised with Coach Puckett. I don't think – I think that uh, they're used to winging that thing around, you know. Yeah. I think Coach Puckett is a little bit more run-oriented. But – and everybody's looking at Cade Cunningham because he had 2,000 yards last year, 20 TDs and 10 INTs, and also ran for 587 yards. And, you know, under Coach Palmer, that's a winging it around kind of guy. But I tell you what, I think Cunningham's numbers actually go up. Really? This year, I do because I think with Coach Puckett trying to in, uh, instill the run and um, a little bit more physical brand of football, I think coming out of the backfield, I think Cunningham is going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups out wide, and I think I actually think his numbers will go up. I can see it, man. He's through some. I saw him uh, saw him this summer, and uh, he he's put on a little bit of weight and uh, got a little. Got a little bigger, yes, so sir. I think he's going to be. Oh, he's a real deal. He's going to be used more in that run game as well. Yep. And you forget Lee. Uh, in addition to Coach Puckett coming in, he's bringing one hell of an athlete himself. Yes, his sir. Son, uh, Caden. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm anxious to see what they're able to do with him. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be used uh, probably as safety for Lake County, if I remember right. Right. Dude, he may be. He may be 
put in a linebacker role this year. He may stay in the secondary. I'm not sure. And I'm sure he's going to be utilized on offense as well. So I'll be anxious to see where uh, Coach Puckett fits him and in, into this uh, offensive scheme. I agree. And then obviously, too, they got Marshall Jefferson uh, transferred in from out of state, 6'2", 305 pounds on the line. Yep. Uh, DeMarcus Smalls, uh, tailback, Elijah Malone, Karis Conger. So Shelbyville's got plenty of talent uh, returning and – Replacing Gary Smith on that line uh, both ways, Lee, is going to be the biggest. I, I think so. They, they lost a couple of really, really big, good linemen. I think that's going to be the number one thing that he's going to have to address is, is uh, you know. Uh, line play. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had a good line play at Pucky, or at. Uh, he did. Um, he sure did. <clears throat> Lake County. And I think my understanding anyway, Lee, I think he brought at least a couple of coaches with yeah. him from Lake County. So. Uh, be they're going to be familiar with his scheme. and uh, Yeah, this is going to be an interesting. wish they had more time to get it put in. Yes, you sir. Know, uh, with this COVID stuff, I think that's going to hurt these new coaches more so than it, than a lot of other mm -hmm. coaches. Uh, but, you know, that, that may that may show up in the Tullahoma game. That may show up in some of these early games is, is why he's anointing this team with, with his, you know, his style of football. But I think Shelbyville midseason and on, as a team, you're not going to want to run into. That's right. You buy that? Yes, sir. All right, Absolutely. Mr. T. Then I will be at that Telahoma game. Uh, looking forward to that. That's uh, August the 20th at Telahoma. I'll be at that game, so I'll see uh, Coach Puckett's debut as the Shelby Golden, Golden Eagles head coach. Summit Lee, uh, the eventual uh, West Side representative, finished up third in this region. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that Destin Wade went down, if you'll remember, mm -hmm. Lee, in the midseason. Uh, right before that Page game, you and I were at that Page Summit game, and uh, I think I'm, I I want to say I picked Summit and you picked Page. One of us picked one, the other picked the, mm -hmm. and then uh, I didn't know when I picked that Dustin Wade wasn't playing, <laughs> so I wasn't really fair. But uh, he is Dustin. This coming in this year, Lee, he is the number nine rated junior, and uh, according to two four seven, his brother Keaton is a, uh, actually rated the uh, number three. Uh, player in the mm. junior class. So those kids uh, got a lot of pressure on them coming into this uh, 2020 season. I think so, and I think Coach Coleman learned a lot last year. And that guy's smart, buddy. Yep. Um, I think he, he learned enough that he takes this region this year, and I think he makes another real deep uh, playoff push. But what I – I think a lot of people don't realize about Summit that I was so surprised with is when you watch them matched up with everybody else in the playoffs, they were so much more physical Yeah. Uh, up front. I mean, they were just physical, you know. And uh, I like that. We love Coach Coleman. Great guy. Funny. Oh, yeah. You know, I just like him. But uh, keeps, I, man. It's a pretty nice field, too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it looks like <laughs> turf over there. Yeah. Um, Man, I, th I see this team making another big, long push, buddy. Well, they better, Lee, because we had them preseason number one. So I just do, man. <laughs> I, I see it. I think they, like I said, I just think they're ready. They got a Trey Hunter running back, a Ethan Ho Hosenbach. Is that it? Hosenbeck. Hosenbeck. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's again, I can't see my glasses are fogged up. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of kids are. Yeah, and, and these, these kids, uh, Lee, as we mentioned at the start of the show, we're able to see some uh, good teams deep in the playoffs, and that experience is invaluable heading into That's this right. year. And, and just uh, coming out of this region, man, you are going to be so battle-tested. And I'll tell you another team. Yeah. Man, you mentioned it, and this may be – this team here may be the summit of last year. And, of course, I'm talking about the Columbia Lions. I think Jason whole squad, uh, if you look, Lee, what they did toward the end of the year last year, uh, they uh, had uh, played well down the stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, they had an impressive win over a really good Stratford team. And then they had a close game against Shelbyville. Yes, sir. And they carried uh, Beach all to the, the way wire. to the fourth quarter, 6-3. to three. They lost to Beach in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. uh, in the first round of the playoffs. So his team, again, and they're young. You know, Christian Biggers is the running back junior uh, leading this squad. DeAndre, ba DeAndre Bailey is uh, – 
uh, uh, listed as a defensive end senior, so he's going to provide leadership on that defense along with the DeAndre Cathy, the uh, linebacker. Mm-hmm. So he and, and his son Jason Ho Jr. at tight end, the sophomore, they got him listed as a as a player to watch. So what do you think about the Lions? Any chance they uh, move up from that uh, four spot last year? Yeah, I think they're the three. You think they're the three? I do. They could be the two, Lee. They could be the one. I mean, I, I don't know if I can. This is it. a very tough it's region, man. It's a tough man. region. It's very balanced. Though. Yes, very balanced. But I, I like the lines a lot, man. Uh, my old buddy Howard Stone will be proud of the lines. What do we say? Don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them. That's right. That's right. Lincoln County, Lee, this team, I was a little disappointed in how they played last year. Uh, started the season two and two, and then they fell six straight, uh, you know, over the stretch. Uh, the offense only averaged five points a game. You That's going to get better. Yeah, you're not going to win many games like that. But Kevin Rose comes in and yes, takes sir. over. He was uh, he comes from Alabama. Uh, he's been at uh, Bob Jones the last 11 years, former offensive coordinator at Hoover. Hoover. So uh, you offensively, they're going to get better. Uh, yeah, you got to you got to believe that. Uh, two and eight, one and four. The, their only region win was over Franklin County. Yep. Uh, Trey Allen is back at uh, running back. Uh, he he's uh, actually transferred Lee from Fayetteville. So uh, that was a big pickup mm-hmm. for him. Uh, Reed Harden, the kicker, is is listed as a key player for him. Tyler West and Parker Webb. So uh, some keys, uh, key players for the Falcons. Uh, Franklin County lead the Rebels. Justin Cunningham in his first year there. He is a long. He was with uh, Coach Rice over at uh, Rockville last year. That's correct. As offensive coordinator. Been around. What, Been what around. Do you, what do you think about uh, Franklin County, man? Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I think they get the four spot. I think they get the four spot. I do. I think they get the four spot. Wagner, Dakota Wagner, 6'3", 225. I mean, I just feed that kid the ball, you know. Well, now you're saying that, but you you remember you got Summit at one, you got Shelbyville at two, you got Page in Columbia that you like. So, and then you got Franklin County. One of them three teams ain't gonna get in there. Who you gonna root out now? I'm gonna hand it Wagner the go, ball. No, I mean who you gonna root out of the playoffs? You didn't said five teams was making it in. Well, right, they can they can split it. They can split. <laughs> like yeah, that four spot's gonna be. For grabs is what I mean. Yeah, well, I I, I like uh, that four spots up for grabs because I, they may get Page. They may get Page. They might. Page lost a lot. Uh, I think Wagner Lee, like you said, I think he is. Todd Taylor. Yeah, Wagner is. He'll be one of the best backs in this region, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Uh, and and you'll remember we talked to Coach McCurry last year, and he was really excited about. Of course, he never got a chance to see it. Uh, come to fruition, but uh, he was very excited about this upcoming season. He mm. felt that this was going to be their year. So, uh, who knows? Man, I'd like I said, I'd just hand hand the ball to Wagner and keep the score low and play defense. Yeah, getting playoffs. I think that should be the game plan. I'm sure that's what Cunningham's got yeah. in mind. Uh, Lee Region <laughs> Six kind of kind of got hit pretty hard by Region Five last year in the postseason, uh, which is not a not atypical. Uh, typically, Region 6 is a little stouter mm-hmm. than Region 5, but uh, they've got a couple of really good teams coming back. Beach, uh, Allen, Anthony Crabtree, he couldn't get past that Friday main event. Jinx have been our number one team last year. Hopefully, that doesn't get Coach Coleman this year, but uh, they were, well, they were 11-1 and one, or 11-0 and 0 heading into that second round. Mm-hmm. Uh, got knocked out by Chevyville 20-17. Uh, to 17. Uh, He's got some uh, very talented kids coming back, Lee. Well, he's got a really, really, really good back in Tayshawn Jefferson. That kid had 1,500 yards and 20 TDs over the last two seasons. And you know Coach Crabtree's going to line up in the I formation and feed him the football. Yep. Uh, Xavier Jones is back as quarterback. Uh, Patrick Hill's back. Adrian Johnson. Got a DB Bronco. How about that, buddy? <laughs> Bronco Hanks. The kid had 58 tackles as a freshman. That's pretty good. Pretty doggone good. So, uh, I see Coach Crabtree right back there. I like them also. Buccaneers. Yeah, I like them also, buddy. And, and Coach Crabtree, you ain't going to out-coach him. You know, you, you're going to have to have some breaks somewhere to uh, knock the Buccaneers out. Mm-hmm. But there's a team that uh, finished 
behind him last year, Lee, uh, that I think has got a good shot at him this year, and that's Gallatin, the uh, Green Wave. Uh, our buddy Chad Watson yeah. uh, does a great job there. He did a great job at Northeast. He was 9-2 uh, in his first year there. They were knocked out by a red hot summit team, 14 to 27. Of course, his only other loss was the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thoughts about uh, Gallatin? I think the biggest thing right now for Coach Watson is going to be trying to replace Briggs. Uh, Spencer Briggs was a load, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Tailback from last year. But he does have Mason Stanley coming in. Right. Kids transferring in from a, that was a two year starter at uh, Lenore City. Uh,. I think Coach Watson is right back in the hunt, first and first or second. First or second. Yep, I really do. Yeah. He, I, he they play really good defense. Caden Cordoza, Luke, uh, uh, Luke Cook is listed as a sophomore mm -hmm. quarterback, so you know he's going to be right there Grimmett. to to jump in if anything happens to Stanley. Uh, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of uh, talent there. On, on, and what I like about it is he's got that Gallatin. Uh, Fan base. Fan base excited. Yes, I sir. think uh, they'd kind of gotten a little lulled under Mark Williams there. Uh, which is also a good coach. We think a lot of the Williams brothers yes, and sir. Mark. But I think the fan base had gotten a little melancholy with, with the green wave. And last year they were really fired up again. Uh, Greg Harris, our buddy, yeah. uh, he uh, you know he sat in with us when we did our show up there. Uh, the, everybody's very excited about Gallup football. And that's a good thing. That helps – that helps with contributions, and they're going to need that this year, especially if you have limited fan participation in the game. So, yeah, I uh, I tell you what, man, he uh, he going to be fine though. Hillsboro Lee, they've got some talented players. Uh, Adrian Hughes, cornerback, he's the number twenty three recruit according to two four seven. Mm -hmm. and then they got Kobe Phillips, another cornerback, number thirty four recruit according to two four seven. They were shut out by Shelbyville thirty nine nothing in the first round. Uh, Coach Coach Fitzgerald, uh, what what do you think happens here, Lee? About the same thing. I think they're going to be the third place team in the region. And they did pick up a big coaching hire. I guess you heard about that, mm -hmm. didn't you? Uh, former LSU Tiger and Tennessee Titan quarterback Zach Mettenberger will be the offensive coordinator. So I'll be kind of interested to see uh, what he's got in store for a team that got shut out in the uh, postseason last year. Well, he better have something because he's got – well, he, that's Metro, though. <laughs> Are they going to play? Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, they're, they're going to potentially miss some uh, region competition there in the first five weeks also. I don't know how all that's going to pan out. Yep. Uh, Hunters Lane, another team, Lee, like you were just mentioning, uh, Preston Scott, 3-8 and eight last year, 2-3 uh, and three in region play. Uh, I got uh, – Motley back at quarterback, mm -hmm. Bingham at wide receiver, Hampton at linebacker, uh, Ramey, uh, another sophomore running back. So he's got some kids there, but uh, this program hasn't been very successful in a while, has it, Lee? No, sir. I think their only wins were over uh, Hillwood and Glencliff and, uh, of course, 3A White's Creek. So uh, I don't think they uh, improve any this year. They may they may hang on to that four spot, but uh, – I like. I think I like Hillwood to take that spot this year. What's your thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah, probably. Uh, they lost to Hunters Lane last year, twenty-seven to twenty-four on their homecoming. Uh, they'll have a, you know probably a little extra incentive to win that game this year, and that's one reason why I kind of put them in that four spot. Uh, they've got uh, you know Miller back at tackle and uh, Murda at the offensive line. Yep. And, and then they got uh, Boo back at linebacker, and then the Avian Brown at wide receiver. Uh, Tom Moore is 12 and 40 overall, four and six in his uh, first year. Is that the same Tom Moore that was at South Pitt? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think they got a good shot at knocking the hill with all. Glenn Cliff Lee was the uh, last place team in this region, 0 and 10. Uh, I don't see them uh, average five points a game last year. I don't think they uh, do anything this year, do you? I think they struggle to even have enough kids to play. Yeah, they? they do, man. Yeah. All right, Lee, well, that's uh, Region 5-6. We're going to put that graphic up on for uh, these two regions, and we uh, will return with Region 7 right after this.
All right, Lee, that was Regions 5 and 6. We're going to continue on with Region 7. Uh, Region 7, uh, Henry County, uh, Coach Counts, uh, team 6-0 and last year, 10-3 and in region play, did win the region. Uh, we don't know right now when Henry County is going to start playing ball this year, Lee, as we recently found out. They've been, uh, I, I want to say it was, it was August 31st it, right now that their schools aren't opening uh, but they haven't announced the date when they can start practicing yet. Yeah, I don't think they they suspended all sports. Yeah, exactly. I I, I mean the, the schools supposedly is the, the opening is is delayed to August thirty first, and they haven't given them a date when they can start playing. Yeah, so I I don't know I don't know how this is all going to play out with the uh, TWSWA rules and changing day to day. I don't know how it's going to play out. I would think if the season were to play out normally. Well, this isn't TWSWA doing this, Lee. This is Henry County. Well, I mean, what are uh, they going to do system. about their uh, how how is their re how is that going to affect their record if they oh, can't yeah, play yeah, the yeah, game? Yeah, I yeah, mean, I get I get you saying I don't I don't know I, I don't I guess that's something the TWSWA needs to address now. That's right. Uh, I mean, if you're telling them they can't play, and yeah. this other team can, I mean, how you going? I don't know there's anything they can do. I, so I give think, the win to this team. I, I think mean. it's the only thing you can do. So I, are they going to forfeit the game as a loss or no contest? No contest is so what they So if you go 8-0 with two no contests and another team goes whatever with three losses, yeah, is the no contest going to get you in the playoffs? I guess. That's some bull crap. Yep. Sorry. Yep. I agree. But anyway, so. I don't know how it's going to play out. I, I think if it played out. Uh, normally, Henry County odds on favorite in this region right now. Ryan Dameron is back yes. at quarterback. The talented Super sophomore. sophomore. Uh, yeah. we're, we've, we've been really impressed with him. Uh, I think uh, another year under his belt at quarterback. You know, again, he's just a sophomore now, Lee. He's got a lot of, a lot of teams, look, a lot of D1 teams looking at him yes, already. Uh, Juwan Odoms is a cornerback. Mm -hmm. He's listed as number 29 recruit. According to two four seven sports, uh, you know I got Sanders at linebacker, Ron, Rodney uh, Littleton at another linebacker, uh, Kendall at running back, Duncan is a backup quarterback. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't really know what to think about this. Uh, I, I was really looking forward to that Haywood game in week one. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen now. Well, I mean, their first two games last year they they lost. They they started zero and two to Haywood and Beach. Yeah. But I don't know. I'd be interested to hear from Henry County football fans what their thoughts are on this because yeah. that is such a tradition rich, one of the best places you'll ever go to watch a game. Right. Oh, this and is people crazy. People show up in Cookville too, man. And Henry yeah. County stands are full every year. It, it's crazy. It. This whole thing's crazy. Yep. Dyer County, Lee, a uh, team that made the push all the way to the semifinals, 20 to 27. Mm -hmm. They did knock Dyer County off in the third round, 34 to, uh, excuse me, 21 to, uh, 31 to 24. I'll get you right here in a minute. Yeah. Give me a third try at it. Uh, Josh Stewart, quarter, senior quarterback, is back. Jordan Anderson, running back. Uh, Caleb Briscoe, a linebacker. Mm -hmm. McLeod, uh, sophomore wide receiver. A lot of talent back on this Dyer County team, but you like Henry County, correct? I, I like Henry County right now, you know, but if, if it were playing normally, yeah. yeah. But I think Dyer County is a two spot for sure. Well, they uh, they lost to Henry County 48-14 in the week, week three. three last year, but, you know, like I say, they got on that run, knocked them off 31-24 to again in the third round. Mm -hmm. So it uh, should be a good battle between those teams again this year. Clarksville, uh, Isaac Shelby's uh, Wildcat squad, seven and five, four and two. Uh, Coach uh, Shelby's team, they they did get hot uh, following a narrow four point loss to Dyer County. Won their uh, last five games prior to falling to Henry County in the second round. So mm -hmm. uh, look for Clarksville to be improved this year with senior uh, Nicholas Edwards, and of course Cobbs at running back to Saltmore, and they got another Saltmore quarterback, uh, Garinger. So uh, you like the fact that they're young, Lee, and they got got a lot of success early. Yep, I do. And uh, Clarksville's got a lot of athletes up in that area. Right. I and mean, there's no shortage of them. So, yeah, I like the Wildcats. Three spot. Three spot. I like them three spot also, Lee. Kenwood, uh, the fourth place team, the Knights. Uh, Robert Gillard is 2-9 uh, and nine in his first year there. 
Uh, they got knocked out by Southwind in the first round. They got Miles at linebacker, Anthony Smith at quarterback, senior. And then they got Jalen Washington at quarterback, the junior. Uh, what What's your thoughts on Kenwood? Uh, I don't know if they get in the playoffs this year, Mike. Yeah. That's just my first, first initial right. thoughts is I don't think they're – They'll be a playoff run this year. I don't think they, you know, they got in the postseason last year two and eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they won the two. They had to win. That's they right. had to beat I mean, the Northeast, Northwest, and that they they were able to do that. That's all they had to do to get in the playoffs. Yeah. That's uh, unfortunately with a small region, you know, you don't you don't have to win too many games. I don't like it, but that's the way that's the way it is. Uh, I think Northeast probably gets that four spot this year. The Eagles under Brandon Clark. Uh, three and seven in his first year, Lee. Uh, but after uh, you know, after they forfeited those six wins in 2018, right. uh, you know, uh, they lost their head coach. So there was a lot of adversity early in this year, and uh, Brandon Clark kind of walked into that. He, he was on staff. He was the mm -hmm. defensive coordinator, uh, and he was a former head coach at Houston County. Uh, so I think I think they improved this year. I do too. Uh, they they've got a young quarterback, uh, Jaden Pog, is uh, fourteen hundred and six yards, sixteen TDs, mm -hmm. eight INTs. Uh, they got him back, and then he's got he's got a, a senior to hand the ball off to, uh, Jalen Bowser. So yeah, average eight yards of carry. Yeah, average eight yards. Lord, of carry. I was averaging eight yards of carry. I would never throw I, it. I would never throw it. You're exactly right, and I suspect they won't throw it as much this year, <laughs> considering he only had four. Uh, what was it? Uh, eight, six hundred I mean, yards, maybe. Six hundred yards, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they move into that yeah. four spot. Clarks for Northwest, three and seven, one and five. Uh, they, they did beat Hunters Lane, Lee, uh, Greenbrier, and uh, West Creek to begin the season three and zero, oh, uh, but only averaged six and a half points in the remaining seven games. Lost all of them. Uh, I don't think. It's no uh, room. No, I don't think so either. Uh, no, I agree. I don't think they move up. Region eight, Lee South win, uh, won that region seven to five, five and one overall. They were knocked out by Dyer County, thirty four to seven, in the third round. What's your What's your thoughts on the Jaguars? Uh, did you cover West Creek? Uh, don't know. Did I not? No, I, I don't believe I did. I'm sorry, Lee. You're exactly right. Up in uh, Region Seven, I yeah. missed. I missed it. West my, Creek. My I, I knew. I thought we had one more. Sorry about that. It's all good. We'll talk about it in a minute, man. Uh, James Figueroa, ten and thirty, four years. I don't see any movement. I just thought we'd give them a shout there. Uh, yeah. West Creek Coyotes. Uh, they did get a win over Kenwood in the region play, and they beat Greenbrier, Cheatham County, and Portland. Uh, but I think they're right back where they are. Yeah, uh, but like you said, though, they did get a win over Kenwood, who made the playoffs. So, they, yep. you know, you might make an argument for them to compete for that fourth spot right. next year if everything falls right. Uh, they do have Braxton Smith back at running back, and then uh, Terrence Brown is a, a really good wide receiver. They got Grand uh, Green, the linebacker. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, they may make a push for that four. That four spot's wide open, wide I think. Up. Wide open. I think past the first three spots, uh, you know, it's anybody's. How the ball bounces. This is how the ball bounces. That's right. right. Sorry about that, Lee. I appreciate you good. calling that to my attention. Uh, uh, getting back to South Wind, uh, new head coach uh, Chris Jones there. Uh, he spent his last 13 years as an assistant with that program. Uh, he takes over for Coach Slocum. Uh, what, what do you think about the Jaguars this year? I think they got a little bit tougher road, man, because they got seven road games, two, two in Mississippi. Uh I can't see them finish, finishing first, Mike. I think a three or a four spot this year probably. Yeah. I think, uh, Lee, again, I think uh, those two Mississippi teams may be at home this year. I, 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 I haven't got my notes updated. I think they went to Mississippi last year. They're probably at home this year. But uh, regardless, I don't know what Mississippi's doing as far as this pandemic right. goes. So that may be two extra games they're going to have to find a competition for. Gregory Turner and uh, Kalen Carter are uh, really good linebacker tandem that they'll those two kids will be back along with devon holmes and uh trey brewer uh they were knocked out as a, as i mentioned by dyer county uh i like lee i don't know about you but i like kirby in this region i'm jumping over months but we'll back up to them yeah. but 
uh, I think Chester Flowers, uh, Cougars team, and we had them as a sleeper last year, and they didn't they didn't live up to our expectations. But we like Tevin Carter. You know, he's a junior quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's a number ten rated junior quarterback. He's a, already got a four star rating, six four two ten. Uh, several SEC schools are after him. Our balls are after him. Yeah. Uh, so I like them. I think to win this region this year. What's your thoughts on that? I do. I think they'll win it. Uh, you know, they got uh, Ladarian Carpenter, Bryson Blocker, Quintavious Walker, Tyler Shaw, David Nevels, uh, going along with Tevin Carter. All right. Uh, yeah, I think Coach Flowers probably wins uh, Region 8. I think they do. Well, they uh, lost to Munford by three last year. Lee lost to Southwind by 20. You know, I had – I had, like I said, I had them as my sleeper. And then uh, they did win six out of the first seven games. Uh, then they ran into that red-hot Dyer County team in the first round. Mm-hmm. I think it, had they not, you know, had Dyer County, had they finished a little higher and, and, and avoided Dyer County for a round or two, uh, we might have seen them there, you know, possibly in a quarterfinal game. Uh, Munsford, uh, the Cougars, they did finish second. And uh, another team with a new head coach, uh, Lee Slate, uh, Calhoun takes over. He was promoted from D.C. Mm-hmm. What, what's your thoughts on uh, the Cougars? Well, he did get a transfer in, Braylon Raglan from Briarcrest, sophomore. Uh, he's good. Raglan's good. Yeah. You got Travion Hawkins, uh, Dalton Allen, Keaton Mason, Jackson O'Neill, Hayson Deason, or Dodson, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, Man, Munford, especially with this transfer coming in. Yeah. Mm. I mean, their only uh, region loss was a one-point loss to South Winley. But if you look, uh, they beat Kirby, they beat Ridgeway, and they beat, beat uh, Brighton by mm-hmm. three points each. So this region, top to bottom, uh, not a big – I don't think it's a big gap. Well, Region uh, 7 killed them last year. Yeah, they did. Uh, I think uh, – I believe uh, South Wind was the only team that got out of the first round, if I remember right, Lee. Uh, Ridgeway <clears throat> was was the next team, the Road Runners. Uh, Deron Sutton does a really good job over mm-hmm. 82 and 40 in 10 years. Uh, I like them to move up to the two spot this year, Lee. Really? Yeah, I do. Hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I was thinking Mumford to Ridgeway three, probably. Well, you know, Mumford did beat the region champion Southwind last year. Uh, so, you know, and, and again, uh, Dron Sutton does a really good job over there. They, they nearly upset Henry County in the first round. That's, That's right. one reason why I like them. Yeah, you know, they, they did play them tight. They played uh, Henry County really tight, so they were playing right at the end of the year, and then they got Brandon mm-hmm. Warner, the uh, free safety. He's rated the 37th uh, recruit in the state. Uh, they got Willis, a big offensive lineman. He's only a junior. Russell is at running back. So, uh, you know, I think I think they might make some noise this year. Brighton, Lee, the Cardinals, uh, you know, they were in the semifinal game as recently as 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look for them to improve this year. Three and seven last year, uh, two and four. What's your thoughts on Brighton? I think they'll be improved. Uh, Josh Fleming's a difference maker for them, linebacker. And then Joe Lizzie, Josh Fleming. Uh, let's see, Darian Lewis, Nick Harville, Marquise Green. I don't know, man. It'll be interesting to see what Coach David does. Well, these four teams, like I say, man, they kind of beat each other up, and there wasn't any clear-cut wins, you know, as far as running away from the competition. Yeah. So this region here, year in and year out, you really don't know what to expect out of it. Yeah. Uh, Memphis Overton, Lee, 1-9, 1-5. One one they got uh, Chris Dennis back at running back, Jordan Bremer. Uh, Orlando Frazier, and uh, I I think I don't say they, they do have a new coach, new Preston coach. Harris. Mm-hmm. He was the head coach at Douglas the last five years. Uh, takes over for Edgar Williams. I don't I don't see him making any noise this year. No, yeah. sir. And then uh, last uh, Kingsbury uh, really really took it on the chin last year. Zero and ten, zero and six. Quentin Jones one and nineteen in two years. I don't mm. think. I don't think the Falcons are making any noise this year either, do you? No, sir. So, Lee, that's uh, that's going to wrap up our Region 7, Region 8 coverage. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, –
put that uh, frame up on the screen for you guys to show uh, our projections for those two scrimmages, and we'll come back with our final uh, discussion on Class 5A. Well, Lee, that's going to conclude our Class 5A coverage region previews. And, Lee, much like last year, I don't have a clue. <laughs> it's it's uh, definitely the most wide-open class again this year, in my opinion. What What's your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I don't know who – I mean, out of the East, is there an odds-on favorite? I don't know. Well, I mean, I think we had Central real high, but I mean, heck, they're the two-time defending state champs. Yeah, you, you got, got you got to look at them. You got Powell is going to be tough. Gibbs is our sleeper team, I think we said. Yeah, West is going to be Crazy. tough. Oak Ridge is going to be tough. Uh, you know, just on and on and on. There's just so many teams, and you know, it's throw them in a hat and draw one out, and I'll take it. You know, I could I could literally do that on both sides of the state. I could yeah. put five teams in a hat. You just draw me one out, and I'll go with them. Yep. I mean, that's, that's kind of the way I feel about this Class 5A. And then looking at the uh, west side of the bracket, Lee, you got uh, you got defending uh, runner-up Summit. Summit. Summit's going to be a really tough team to get by. Uh, Beach. Beach, Shelbyville, uh, Gallatin, uh, Henry County, Dyer County. I mean, there's just, I mean, literally 10 teams. I could name 10 teams right now, and if you made me pick, any one of those ten teams, I, I would run with it. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's just, crazy. It's crazy. Five A is just so much uh, balance in, in that classification. It always is. So your sleeper out of the West is Columbia. You think? Yeah, I put Columbia as a, a a sleeper to get to to. I mean, like don't sleep on them. You know, they're going to make a wave. Yeah, they're going to make a wave. I mean, I, I I think they I think they got a a shot to advance to the second round, maybe third round if yeah. everything falls right. I I like Gibbs. Oh, uh, I like I like Gibbs up at the, the top. East. I like Gibbs out of the East. Uh, you know, it'll be the kind of the, the, the dark team horse. that may win a game you don't expect them yeah. to win. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not picking these no. teams to go to the state title. Uh, but they they may they may slide into playoffs and they may may yeah. upset somebody in a, in the first or second round. Right, get on a roll. Yeah, I, I'll go along with that. Maybe maybe like a Dyer County from last year, a Summit from last yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I could roll with that. But I think the teams we named initially. Yeah. I, I, one of those teams is going to win a state title. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, I just don't know who it's going to be. <laughs> All right, folks. Wide with, open. Yes, yeah, wide open, man. We we appreciate you uh, watching the show. Uh, again, this is our fifth show in this series of six. Uh, Coach T. dot com, Jim Thompson. He's our main guy. We appreciate him uh, supporting us each year. Uh, third year we've been affiliated with Coach T. dot com, and uh, it's been a it's been a good marriage for yep. us, and and hopefully for him. Uh, we try to give him exposure, and and obviously we're getting a lot more exposure from him than we're we're giving him. But uh, we appreciate everything he does. We appreciate. Uh, Marsha Howard with the Labyrinth Images, uh, responsible for our hats and our shirts and uh, our merchandise. And, uh, again, go to uh, FridayManEvent.com. If you uh, are wanting some gear and uh, us two poor guys can't afford to give everybody a hat this morning, one, because we would uh, we'd be broke, wouldn't we, Lee? Oh, yeah. The hats are popular. But, uh, yeah, I, I would give every one of you a hat that asked for it if, if I had the, the means to do that. Agree? Agree. <laughs> But, uh, again, this is, I am Mike Walter, and he is Lee Teed, and we are the Friday Men event. We appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, tune in tomorrow night for uh, Class 6A. We'll see you guys then.